Ni hao. My name is Jack Dangerman, and I'm very happy to welcome all of our Taiwanese users here to this conference. I would like to be there myself, but I can't be there this time. Sometime in the future, I'll come back. Um, let me also say the purpose of this conference is that our users get together, and they share ideas, and they learn from us, and we also learn from you. And I appreciate that opportunity. I know it takes time from your schedule, but I hope you are as excited as I am about what's coming from ESRI next. ESRI's fundamental philosophy is to advance GIS technology and methods associated with this technology so that we can create a better planet. We can create better societies that are more open and effective in protecting the environment and making better use of energy resources, uh, better cities to live in, uh, better forests to manage, better water production, more efficient society. That's our main goal. And we do that by engineering these tools based on your feedback uh, about what you need. And we, we work very hard at that here in California, and we're very serious about it. These meetings give us a chance to get feedback from you where you're having problems or a vision that you might have that perhaps our tools, if altered a little bit, could advance. For the last three years, we've been working very hard on the next big generation of GIS. This is going to come out this summer. It's called ArcGIS version 10. Um, it integrates and evolves our desktop products, makes them more efficient and much easier to use. Um, it advances our server products, and they will be more standards-based and interoperable and supporting the web and all of the clients that are associated with that server. We also make advances in mobile GIS, like running GIS on the iPhone and in the Android Google phones, as well as the Microsoft platform, Microsoft Mobile. These three client types will access servers, in the sky, in the cloud, in the Amazon cloud, in enterprise systems, and also in local data sets, local geodatabases. Uh, this vision is quite, quite big. And what we are putting into our users' hands are not only a next step for making things easier and faster and more efficient, but also new tools to help us address designing our world. We're promoting a kind of earth designer vision. That is that GIS users not only describe the geology and the soils and the vegetation and the land use and the transportation, they not only describe them with maps and communicate those descriptions with maps and models, but they also are gonna be given at release 10 new tools to sketch and design with designing the future. So for all of you, it's going to be easier technology, faster technology. It'll have lots of new tools. We will add 3D to the technologies at version 10, 3D analysis. We're integrating time into the technology, and we are also integrating design ideas. In part, this isn't just a technology thing. It's also a way of thinking putting in our users' hands the tools that will allow them to participate in creating a new kind of map, maps about the future, interpreting all of our science. Another big theme is moving GIS onto the web. The web is only about 20 years old. When it first came along, I had the idea, wow, it's amazing. We can connect everybody through this network. And while it was confusing at first, search engines helped. Now, moving geography and GIS onto the web, it provides a new kind of integrative technology, the ability to reach out to different servers and overlay knowledge maps that are on different servers in a distributed environment around the country, around the city, around the world and bring those overlays together and mash them up, kind of like GIS in the sky. 
ArcGIS.com is a new platform for that. We're releasing it in a few weeks. This allows you to register services, share your services, and let other people discover them. And also be able to mash them up or integrate them without any programming at all. We will release a technology that allows people to share maps and apps. I can go and search for a map, combine that map with my map in my desktop or in a browser or in a cell phone, and I can share the combination with somebody else. So it's going to be building on each other's knowledge step by step. And this will lead to not only connecting all of our users, but more importantly, connecting common knowledge about what the world is like. And on that platform, we will introduce new tools for sketching and designing. It's going to be very exciting for you. I think it's going to be moving GIS people who've traditionally focused on describing geography the way it is into creators of new geography. The other big chapter that will be emerging with version 10 is sometimes called volunteer geographic information or crowdsourcing. This allows people in cell phones or in browsers to contribute their idea or their knowledge about a place to a common database. For example, in New York City, people that live in the city on their cell phone can say, there's a pothole here or cracks in the street there, or there's a broken tree here or a street light that's out there. They can bring up the map, put the data in, and that transaction goes right into the database version 10 as a new layer. And that new layer in the geodatabase can then be integrated in with workflow or other kinds of activities that a city or an agency has. So this new concept of VGI, or Volunteer Geographic Data, or crowdsourcing, uh, will have major impact on all of you. Okay, if you let it. Engaging citizens to give feedback can help run government. It can open up government more. That same concept can be applied to citizen science. Every citizen is an amateur scientist. Here's a bird here, here's a water here, here's the temperature here. So this is a trend that's happening because of the Web 2.0 concept, the idea that we gather the citizens as measuring devices or as commentary by citizens into common knowledge. Um, and GIS at 10, ArcGIS at 10, can manage that. ArcGIS 10 has much easier more extensive analysis, 3D analysis, and time in the desktop. And the server gets better as well, as I mentioned. But the big idea is that all of these various pieces are put together into an integrated system. From the cloud, from the enterprise, uh, from your own local data, it's, it's very effective. I want to speak for a moment about IDT. IDT has been our long partner in Taiwan, and I appreciate very much the investments that they've made in working with you and building GIS knowledge there and providing support. And I back them fully as an organization that's, that's effective. ESRI, from time to time, makes mistakes. Uh, we make mistakes in the technology or how we support you. Uh, and, and so does I, IDT. Yet, I think both of our companies are open to listening to criticism of how we should change, how we should evolve, how we should get better, how we should support you better. And that is our main mission, is building good, strong organizational support so that you, who are doing the important work, can be more effective. And I appreciate that relationship with you. I appreciate the relationship with uh, IDT, and I look forward to uh, a wonderful ongoing relationship and as you grow GIS in Taiwan and we support you. Thank you and I'll look forward to meeting some of you when I come to Taiwan. Thanks.